driving the famous Mach 1 today. Haven't stretched the legs on this thing in a while. But I like that characteristic shaker scoop over there. It's in sixth gear, we're cruising. This car is awesome. Anyway, you'll notice I got the car full of tools and stuff. So I'm helping out at the shop, doing some work on the side. Yesterday I wired up some gauges and Malloy Cage 96 Mystic Cobra. And today I'm going up there to change the oil in that same car and just go over it a little bit. It's getting ready to go home this week. So just going over a few things, make sure it's ready to go. It's been a long-term project. So getting it ready to go home. And uh, we got a Sonic Blue Cobra that came in, had a problem with the head. We had to pull the head off and fix it. And we just got the motor back in it Friday night. And I'm gonna go over it, put the suspension back under it, get it back on the ground, and make sure it's solid, build up the fluids, and uh, exercise it, make sure it's good to go, so it can go home this week as well. So, like I say, Sunday morning, family's still asleep, got up, made breakfast, got the car out, figured it's a good day to drive it, it's nice, not supposed to rain, and it's just nice to be able to enjoy your hot rods every now and then. All right, so I'm here working on Malloy's car. This is Malloy Cade. This is his built Cobra with a big Pro Charger on it. This is the D1 SC with the big red blow-off valve. Sounds like a street sweeper when it's going down the road. I'm changing the oil in it. While I'm in here, I'm about to pull off the catch can and drain it. See what the drain is. I don't want it to drain and make a mess on everything. So I unhook the lines, about to unbolt this, take the whole catch can off i'm gonna drain it to my oil bucket there so i'm doing a complete oil change putting some fresh oil in it and filter uh, which is right here motorcraft and filter and i uh, just put gauges in it last night and here's what they look like all right well it's been a few hours i did a complete oil change on this car this car takes it's got a morosa oil pan so it actually takes like eight quarts of oil put some five weight 30 oil in it the new motorcraft oil filter i took this tank off and drained the water out of it just barely any oil residue mostly water it catches the moisture out of the motor and i resealed it the bottom of it was leaking a little bit so i took it apart put new thread sealer on it fix that and cleaned it all up looks really good sorry my allergies bother me today the pilot is horrible uh try to wipe down the engine bay did a dry detail kind of sprayed my rag and wiped everything off don't want to get water in here you know just potential problems uh but wiped down uh, a lot of the dirt and residue and pilot and stuff off of it uh hand wash the car to get some of the grime and residue down just to kind of bring it back a little bit but clearly the uh pun intended you know the clear coats come off of the car in a lot of places but overall the car came back pretty good i mean it could stand a cut and buff but at this point he's gonna have to strip the car and repaint it anyway but i did try to clean it up a little bit for him check the oil uh oil level's good uh topped off the power steering it was a little bit low check the brakes it's good check the water level it's good just went over everything on the car make sure everything looks pretty good on it and uh yeah so right now this car should be ready to go home we gotta adjust the speedo the speedo is really fast so when you're barely moving it's registering like between 60 and 80 miles an hour so i've been working on uh malloy's cobra i had to put an abbott box in it an abbott box is a box that goes in between the vehicle speed sensor and actually lets you adjust the speedometer reading so i've got it right here because i've been doing some adjustments on it and uh once you get it close you actually call abbott and jerry's who i talked to and i got it real close here but it's still a few mile per hour off so he gave me a custom setting i just put into the box here and i'm getting ready to do a test drive and get everything tidied up but uh this car's ready to go home it's got the gauges i put in it it runs great and uh this is the last thing get the speed on the right so let's go for a test drive see how close it is
right, so I finished up the Mystic Cobra earlier. Now I'm working on this sweet Sonic Blue Cobra. So uh, Logan got the motor in it Friday night, but he didn't get a chance to tidy everything up. So I've got the strut reattached, the spring on, and I was getting ready to hook the brakes up. But if you look in here, there's supposed to be a brake pad there. <laughs> that's the remnants of a brake pad that's actually the back metal and there is no pad left and on the front side there there's like a remnant of a brake pad so that's uh that's not good that's not good at all so all right so now that i got my brake hung back up so it doesn't drag you'll see i got the hub here well here's the rotor and this is the back side of the rotor where that non-existent pad was running check that out Look at that. That is a huge dig down into that thing. I mean, that's a ridge from the edge and back. That's bad. So I've already called the owner. I said, look, man, we already got the motor back in. We had to pull it down. He had a burnt valve in the head. So we had to pull the head off, repair the head, put the head back on the motor, get the motor back in the car. And now we're just assembling. I said, but this is a safety issue. Your brake pad is gone. Your rotor chewed up i said at a minimum i recommend uh two rotors and a set of pads he said no problem why you got it go ahead and knock it out i said look man i ain't gonna charge you no labor i'm already doing labor putting it together i just gotta get some parts and stick them together so what i want to show you is if you ever have one of these cars you can't get the rotor off rotor stuck it just doesn't slide off you see what i'm saying spray some engine degreaser all around the hub here and around the studs let it soak for a little bit then take you a, a, a hammer hit it north south east west and you'll start breaking it loose right here and then what you have to do is you have to hit it and you have to actually pull against one side as you're hitting it it'll come off so let me show you what that looks like I gotta set the camera down for this. See how this works. That's all it is to it. Check it out. Boop. And it's off. And you'll see this rotor. See how it's chewed up as well. It's got the ridge on it. So these rotors have served a great life, but it's time to replace them with some good ones. So I'll get some new rotors for it. And we'll slap some rotors on it. While I'm in here, I like to check the hub. Make sure it spins freely. Don't have any crazy noise or anything. And I just got through assembling this side with the spring and the strut, putting it back together. And uh, the steering outer tie rod everything seems tight you notice the sway bar is not installed i got to grab the sway bar over there put the sway bar in and the factory which you probably haven't seen one of these in a long time this is the factory catalytic x pipe or h pipe sorry i've got to put it on so once i get that in place the new rotors and pads this car will be ready to drop back on the ground i can put uh, fluids in it water oil change the filter oil filter and all and then we can fire this car up make sure everything's good to go test drive it and uh customer can pick this up later this week
just got a new coal and distributor to fix an intermittent running problem it had. It had a misfire, but it sounds rowdy. Old fox body. Three valve Mustang, Put some long two fitters on it. Trying to finish up for the end of the day. Man, this thing's dirty. So it's uh, eight o'clock Thursday night. I just got through taking the headers off of this 05 GT. They are laying right here on the ground. First time I have ever taking headers off of a three valve. So Melvin had to give me some pointers and <clears throat> try to assist me a little bit getting that K member out. What a pain though. So once I got the K member out and rolled it back there, then I was able to access the long tube headers and then take them out. And unfortunately the way the tubes are on this thing, this being a 4.6 three valve, um, you can't just get a socket in there and an air wrench and just wing them out. You have to do a lot of it by hand with a wrench and uh, Man, what a pain. So it took me a while. I'm a rookie. What can I say? <clears throat> First one I ever did, but you know what? I stuck around till I got it done. There's the old ones on the ground. There's the new ones, which are gonna go in tomorrow. And the reason is the guy said that they had some leaks and he thinks the leaks are down here in the collector. Um, I saw some evidence that kind of the gaskets, if you look right there, Looks like maybe the gaskets may have had some leaks, but whatever. He got a brand new set of American Racing headers and gonna stick on it and put it back together tomorrow. And then this car will be ready to go home. So hopefully it goes back together a little, little easier. Still gonna be a pain. You still gotta run the bolts in finger with your fingers and then use some wrenches to tighten it down. So it's not that easy, but just wanna show you. Uh, got the car down and gonna assemble it tomorrow. So. Uh, Another full full day at Fast Lane. Been working here every day this week since last Saturday, getting cars together. And you know, it's been a great experience. Uh, as I told you, um, quit my job of 30 years and been down here ever since for the full week, hanging out, turning wrenches. It's been awesome. You know, nothing like getting your hands dirty and doing something that you love. So uh, stay tuned for more Mustang content.
drive after the new header install. It seems to be working. Everything's charging. That's good. Just a nasty day today. Steering feels good. accomplished. And uh, as you can hear that awesome Mach 1 out here, get ready to take it home, let it warm up on that E85 tune. doesn't hit like those pushrod cars quite but it doesn't sound too bad all right till next time I figure you like to hang out with me in the shop and see what I do when I'm not at my house working on stuff and clearly I work on stuff here at fast lane motorsports too and it just so happened today we're working on two Cobras so till next time stay tuned so all the way home I've not been able to drive the car hard so here you go